Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series where we are going to discuss about uh, PhD in general. Uh, so I have with me Gaurav Mahapatra who is doing PhD in Aerospace Engineering in TU Delft, Netherlands. He is currently in his final year of his PhD and I will be soon going to my final year within two months of my PhD. I am also doing a PhD in Netherlands in Open University, Netherlands. So we will have a short discussion about the topic like how hard is a PhD and if you want to know more about Gaurav then please check the previous video where we discuss in details about his PhD in Aerospace Engineering in TUDELF. You can see the video flashing on the screen. So in this video let's go to the first point about how hard is a PhD. I know it's a very broad topic, we'll try to keep it short, restricted to few points that we have noted down and uh, let's start with the first point okay so maybe okay so maybe it will be like something gaurav is going to speak and then if i find something different or any new experience i will add to it otherwise i will proceed with the next uh, topic instead of making it too uh, boring or elaborate so yeah so the first point is what was your bent of mind that made you choose a PhD? Was it completely driven by your keen research interests or the circumstances surrounding you or it was something else? Uh, hi, Sambit. Nice to talk to you again. Uh, so yeah, um, I think it is the first point that you raised. That is, I had keen research interest. That is, uh, uh, I really was driven by the idea that, okay, uh, uh, I want to learn more about this uh, topic. I want to be an expert in this topic. So I guess that was the primary dri driving factor. And um, uh, so I have already talked about what I do uh, in my PhD in the previous video. But uh, uh, so what was very exciting about this topic to me was it was really uh, the field was new. Uh, the research that was happening uh, had a lot of scope because uh, uh, atmospheric sciences, planetary sciences is actually uh, starting to pick up a lot because of the whole global warming and uh, um, the whole pollution issue. So there's a lot of research happening in this domain. And uh, uh, I specifically wanted to uh, get to learn more on the uh, uh, exoplanetary side that is more astrophysics that is uh, 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 exploring new worlds so uh, that's that was a dream and uh, yeah that's what kept me uh, interested in this maybe you want to add your uh, uh, take <laughs> yeah so yeah I mean for me I I had an interest I had a desire to do PhD when I started my master thesis in the second year of my master's here but yeah. uh, still I was not sure because I had in my mind like if I don't get an internal PhD and if I apply via different portals, the opening openings that I see, yeah. uh, I was not sure like how is the competition. In my mind it was like maybe it will be too competitive and uh, maybe I might not get a PhD immediately after finishing masters which was somehow uh, hitting me a lot because the the finance side of doing a master's in Netherlands is very expensive so that's why you want to somehow be engaged in some areas so that's why I would say like I had a research interest in the topic that I'm working now also which is broadly called learning analytics I right. won't go into the details uh, I have mentioned about that in many of the videos I will show I will tag it here so uh, it was one point and also mm -hmm. it was partially mm -hmm. contribution of the circumstances like uh, as I said like masters was very expensive so I had in mind I need to somehow be engaged somewhere so that's why apart from this I was also looking at backup uh, jobs uh, even though I was more driven to PhD but still I had in mind like even if it is a short one year or six months or something I find in a startup or something I can develop some of my skills if I don't manage to get a PhD immediately so yeah, yeah so I had interest to do PhD but it was not a pressing uh, desire initially but still luckily till now what I feel is that my research interest what I did in my master thesis uh, matched quite very much to what I'm doing now. So that mm. is a kind of a boon uh, in itself. Yeah, yeah, I can totally understand because you are from a computer science background and 
uh, there's a lot of opportunities uh, for computer science graduates uh, in other fields. But for me, it was just a very narrow research path. Uh, so PhD is kind of a natural uh, step to take. And I basically followed with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in the initial years of the PhD here, did you feel that you needed more guidance from your supervision team? Uh, if yes, why? Or if no, then why not? Uh, so uh, yes, uh, I needed a lot of guidance actually because uh, in my field, it is very uh, domain oriented. Uh, unless someone really knows the ins and outs of the topic that uh, you're going to work with, it will be very difficult for you to just get that from uh, books. Um, so the, the discussion was the most important aspect for me, that is to understand how the whole, uh, uh, so my field deals with a lot of uh, numerical modeling of uh, physical aspects, that is how atmospheres react to uh, uh, different wavelengths of light and uh, how clouds and um, other uh, atmospheric phenomena affect them. And to really understand this, it was very important to have a discussion. So initially, I would go off with a lot of questions and uh, thankfully, my supervisor was always uh, happy to help me with it. Uh, but as time went, I, I started, uh, once I had built a good fundamental basic and I could just uh, work on my own. Yeah, maybe you want to give your take on it. <laughs> yeah, so so I again, this is very uh, subjective, but still uh, my experience was like in my first year, especially um, you have a daily supervisor and you also have the professors who are like promoters in your PhD. Yeah. And uh, depending on how the load is divided, sometimes you have meeting with all of them or some of them. But in my case, uh, I felt like initially for the first six months, they gave a lot of freedom. Uh, so before going to that, I will tell you one thing, like most of the cases, you already have a predefined proposal or a topic when you start a PhD, but in not in all cases you have that. So in my case, yeah. there was not a fixed proposal. There was a broad area where I can work, but I had a lot of freedom to decide my own uh topic that i want to work with based on that huge scope which i had so right. that's why that six month period there was a lot of freedom they gave a lot of freedom so that that is the reason why uh, i felt like the the supervision or the guidance or the time that they can give to me i felt like they should have given more time i did not get that but in a way i understand that it is good after i could not understand that at the beginning but at afterwards i understood like it was more like uh, uh, whatever i've seen during my masters like they just wanted you to have uh, more hold on that and then when you come up with something like for example suppose you you frame a one pager or a two pager and then they are very open to have discussions but yeah. unless you reach that point, they leave you very open and they don't want to have something discussed before you have something ready or you have such, some curiosity or questions or some content yeah. from your side. So yeah. so in a way, that is good, like to develop yourself. And yeah. also one advantage, I would say, like because I had my master thesis here, so I knew a lot of things which I would highly recommend if you are planning to do masters here, it will be very helpful because especially for India, if you're coming directly from there, you might find a gap in the way you frame research questions, you uh, write a proposal and there are many other aspects surrounding it. Yeah, yeah I totally agree with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what is the most challenging part of doing a PhD, maybe you can focus on one or two specific things which you think are the most challenging part of any PhD. Yeah, so I think you already touched on that right now with the previous point a little bit, that is the freedom to uh, come up with something uh, of your own. Uh, so uh, as, a, as a student who uh, did all of his studies in India, we have this uh, habit of not really thinking independently and uh, here the whole situation is that 
uh, they give you a lot of freedom to uh, do uh, or to frame your own research questions and to uh, pursue uh, specific points that you want to address. So a PhD here is really your own PhD, not a, a, a PhD that you get because you do, do a project under someone. Uh, so you have to frame your questions. You have to even understand what the research question is. Uh, uh, address that research question through doing research, uh, which is good enough to do, do a, uh, have a paper or uh, world-class research. Uh, yeah, so that is, I guess, the whole combination of this is the ch most challenging part of doing a PhD, especially in Netherlands. I've heard of other requirements in other uh, countries, in France and UK, it might be a bit different. Uh, but yeah, for Netherlands, it is um, the, the whole freedom of uh, having your own work yeah, yeah so i agree with it 100 percent. and i'll just add a small point like uh i think it will be valid for most of the phds uh like uh when you start a phd maybe like here phd is for four years so when you start a phd like maybe for first one year or first two years you will see the growth will be very slow. Like that's what my experience is like. Maybe like you go grow like 20% or 30% and then suddenly within one or one and a half years yeah. towards the end or maybe after the half of the PhD, you will see the growth increases very fast. Like just like the exponential curve. Like Yeah, precisely. Yeah, so yeah. initially getting that, like getting that starting, like getting that starting mode or starting point is is takes time and you should also learn to be patient like like don't get frustrated maybe talk with your colleagues or peers and uh, talk with network with people and it will help you a lot in these kind of yeah. circumstances like yeah i agree with it <laughs> okay uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so next point uh, you are already we mentioned that you are in the final year of the phd so yeah, yeah. you survived the three years of the PhD. So any particular survival tips that worked for you? Like, yeah, yeah I think it. Uh, uh, I can only speak from my experience. That is, uh, 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 I guess the whole survival comes down to the uh, point of uh, uh, determination and perseverance. So uh, since it is your own PhD, you have to own it take the responsibility and uh, uh, try to finish it uh, uh, as uh, properly as possible. So uh, I would say survival tips would be uh, to be very practical. Uh, 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 whatever you uh, learn, you should uh, have a good uh, journal to uh, or maybe just write down a few points every day on what you actually uh, uh, read on and how you uh, what is your thinking during uh, uh, that time? So because also every uh, few weeks, your whole uh, point of view changes. So it's important to note what is your thinking during uh, doing the research uh, uh, in the research phase. Um, so that later when you uh, also have to write it down, you know, OK, this is what I was thinking and this is what I found out. And now you have to tie it up to make a whole research. So I think it's it's important to regularly write down and regularly uh, journal your ideas. Um, how it worked for me is I would uh, uh, just write a few points every day uh, uh, on what are my to-dos and uh, what is it that I require to achieve today or in a few days and then if I'm meeting that goal. Um, so yeah, that may, that brings me to this point that okay, maybe have really um, achievable but small goals uh, so that you can have the fulfillment of uh, uh, achieving achieving some small things in your PhD because a PhD as a whole is quite huge and sometimes you uh, don't get, see the end of it. So it is important to actually keep on uh, getting the feeling that you're progressing and you're uh, doing something. So. Yeah, I guess that's how I have, I've been surviving yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can totally agree to that because uh, even when making these videos, I normally write down the ideas that I get apart yeah. from also the PhD because uh, it's like you, it helps in both things. Like one, as you said, like to 
to to because you might forget later like what idea yeah. you had that day or two days before and also yeah. when you write something it helps you to remember better like what exactly. you are thinking like yeah. and apart from that i would say like maybe try to be to be uh, it's a very generic advice like try to be open and flexible because i have heard from many phd's uh like when you have this go no go meeting at the end of a, end of the year like we have in netherlands yeah. so you have a proposal and whatever i have heard i don't know the exact percentage like most people what they have as a phd proposal in the first year it doesn't mean that that will remain the same when they graduate at the end of the phd it so, actually is the case for me also yeah. <laughs> my uh, my current uh, uh, state of the phd is completely different than my initial research goal so uh, i can totally relate to that so you yeah. should be ready to be flexible and yeah. considering the situation now which many of might have experienced i have also experienced it personally maybe i'll make a video later like these kind of circumstances may also change the path of your phd so always try to be open and flexible yeah. and be ready to accept these uh, sudden changes or something if crops up like during your phd yeah i agree with that yeah so yeah so this uh, yeah so let's go to the next question according to you getting a phd is more difficult or finishing a phd is more difficult what do you think yeah i think uh, this is a no brainer because uh, uh, i mean of course getting a phd is difficult from the point of view of qualifications but once you are there once you have got the phd you're there i mean um, uh, the phd does not do itself you have to really put a lot of effort to finish the phd so i think uh, uh, the finishing part is the most uh, uh, difficult and important part because uh, also i was reading the other day that uh, um, uh, even at u delft the amount of dropouts uh, from a phd is around 40% so 40% of all phd's drop out somewhere during the four years so that says that getting the phd does not mean you will uh, finish the phd uh, because there's a lot of uh, motivation and a lot of uh, dedication required to actually go through the whole process yeah okay so yeah there is no point of talking anything about on this point uh, yeah. because this is uh, very like everyone must agree to this and let's yeah. go to the next point where we're going to have a discussion like uh, so uh, when you start a phd like what or maybe before starting a phd when you decide that i will take up a phd what should be your state of mind, mind? like maybe very briefly like what you think that should be the state of a mind of a person who wants to start a phd or maybe he has already started a phd and then thinking about the long term ending of the phd or so i think the the right the at least the approach that worked for me is i wanted to do the research so i did not want to i did not uh, think uh, uh, of it from the point of view that i want a phd uh, but rather i want to do some meaningful research and uh, be expert at this topic so uh, i would say the best way to understand the state of mind is you like you have done your masters in some topic and you really like that topic to the extent that you are willing to dedicate the next 4 to 5 years uh, constantly working on that specific topic because uh, it is a niche that you are going to carve out and uh, uh, so that should be the state of mind because if you start with the idea that oh i want to get a phd uh, that 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 idea will uh, not remain in your head for a long time and eventually you will doubt why did you start a phd so At, at least that's what for worked for me okay yeah. yeah so i i totally agree like you you i mean just to make it uh, short i would say like uh, what i think is like uh, you should have like this small small uh, steps or milestones like okay if yeah. i want to have this in one month or two month or three month and i would say like uh, even because most of what you are doing is measured by by your success in a certain experiment or maybe some good com com comments from a supervision team like okay that uh, uh, the the research was uh, i would say like uh, 
I don't know how to frame it. Like, okay, the the way you approached this experiment, it was very interesting. Or maybe you get some praise from your peers or your supervision team. So these are like all these external validation that helps you to motivate you. But I would yeah. say don't rely on them completely. So you can form this reward mechanism yourself also like for example if you think okay i will write five pages uh, within a month and i'll have this even though i don't submit somewhere but if you keep on making that progress and mm -hmm. have that in your mind and uh, make yourself happy with what you wanted to achieve and you have got irrespective of your external circumstance because personally my experience like uh, i had a literature review which is not accepted yet and I have got already six rejections for that literature review. So that doesn't wow. mean that it is really bad, but it's just sometimes there are many circumstances. Sometimes it may be because it's not a fit uh, or maybe it partially fits to the theme of the special issue or the conference you are applying for. Sometimes some reviewers might be, you might get bad reviewers. It happens a lot. Or maybe sometimes... Uh, it might be incomplete, but depending on how you and your supervisor see it, maybe it is complete, but for some reason it is still incomplete. And yeah. uh, so, so the thing I wanted to say is that like, even if it takes two or three years, uh, as you said before, like be persistent and don't get bogged down by this small, small, uh, because it may so happen that someone might get one or two rejections uh, in the whole PhD and someone might yeah. get 10 rejection, but that doesn't mean that your research is not good or something. So you cannot weigh these things like good or bad. It's not that binary. So no. try to have an open uh, and try to reward your own self based on your own milestones instead of being yeah. bothered by this societal or any kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, what really helped me with this is that um, there is something objective about uh, this is, uh, I mean, you can get rejection on the basis of what you've written, but if your output is original and if you know that it is contributing to uh, the, the field or society in some way, then you know that the research is right, but uh, only how you present it has to be changed. Uh, I think most of the times that is the case. I mean, if your research is not going in the right direction, I think you will definitely get a, a feedback from your supervision team. So uh, that's there. So in my case, I uh, if I get a validation that, okay, I am progressing in the right step, uh, rejections, as you said, we have to accept it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, yeah, so... Did you feel any mental or social pressure while doing a PhD? Uh, 